Hello. Hi, Sara. <laughs> Hi, Daida. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Fine, fine. Good. Everything good. is okay. I'm seeing that everyone is connecting at the moment. Yeah. So we can wait a few minutes. That sounds good. Yeah, it's interesting to see who will join us today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen already some of your colleagues. Oh. Like Simon, I think also Alan, maybe. Mm, probably um, there ahead. Hi to the team of Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what are your, you've, you've got a terrace at home or are you in the office right now? No, I'm, I'm at home today. Mm, yeah, it's so Saturday, yes, so. I'm, I'm in my terrace. So it yeah. means it's a uh, nice weather and yeah. uh, uh, yes, I mean, it's, uh, it's nice to have the tasting here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I okay, mean, you, you? Yeah. Where are you now? At the office? No, I'm not. I'm also at home. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's a, um, a long holiday, so um, yeah, I'm at home today. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. it's it's nice to be able to offer uh, our clients and and also your clients um, a bit of a tasting today. Uh, yeah. So um, so they've got something something productive to do on on a long holiday yeah productive yeah. but also i think uh funny because yeah. I mean, there will yeah. be a part uh, more concentrated to the theoretical aspect of nebbiolo but then we will also try the wine so that would be also i mean something nice to, to yeah. do on saturday yeah i think so yeah and uh, i would from from here from this side of the um, uh, of the camera want to say that have a bit of patience with me because this is the first time that I do this. Uh, Sara is a total professional. She had her one of her first yesterday, so she she's way ahead. Um, uh, but uh, we at Taste are very excited to start doing these types of, of uh, live uh, tastings. Considering the times now, we have to readjust to to whatever the society requires and um, be able to present things uh, for our clients in, in in the best possible way. And yeah. um, that right now is, is this, and we've had a great response so far, which we are very happy about. And um, yeah, let's see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's nice because usually at the end of May, we, in the past years, we were used to come to visit you, like personally yeah. In, uh, yeah. in Denmark. And we were used to visit your customers um, and to offer some uh, uh, wine tastings or some um, dinner with the winemaker. So since this year we could not make it, that's the reason why we have decided to study a different way to be in touch with all our wine yeah. lovers from Denmark. And exactly. uh, I'm so happy that uh, you got a very nice response from, uh, from them. And uh, so it's, it's good. We will see also after uh, our masterclass. I yeah. suppose uh, people, I, I hope we, people will be happy and maybe we can... Uh, do it again in the future and it's uh, something very yeah, nice we, to do. we will we will definitely uh, considering that right now we're talking to the public of Denmark um, but we've just released our uh, our sales spots on on the on the Swedish um, uh, part of the company yeah you told me yeah and we're very excited about that uh, too so we'll probably have a tasting with that there might be a couple of people joining from the in from the Instagram from from the Swedish part and uh, so welcome to those uh, also um, and um, yeah I mean just we have to adapt to all of this and just give the the firmer and the, the the nice possibilities for our customers to be in touch with you and in touch with us during this these um, uh, these times um, yeah as much as that, uh, I would say. So, yeah. Uh, well, we could start going or what do you think? Yeah, yeah I uh, think, yes. Then past... if someone is connecting after, I mean, they will follow the, the masterclass from that moment. But I think there are already some people connected. So maybe we can start now. Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. Uh, maybe just for the people that are um, uh, following us, if you have some questions during uh, our speech just uh, write them in the comments and uh, we will uh, we will reply to them uh, in the mid meanwhile or maybe at the end of the of the master class so just uh, write uh, all your doubts and we will exactly. be able to, to reply to answer yeah and with that being said we will also uh, most likely from next week be able to publish um, uh, this tasting uh, in our webpage and uh, probably Facebook um, as well as probably having a tasting for the Swedish um, for the Swedish Instagram yeah, sure. as soon as possible. So if, if people cannot join just more than 15, 10 minutes or, 
or or less and want to see the whole uh, the whole tasting these options right yeah exactly <laughs> and i will post it also on my on our uh, youtube channel and yeah. maybe also facebook so there will be the possibility to see it again for many many times in the future <laughs> that's good that's good yeah. okay so yeah. we can start yeah go for it so uh, I just uh, uh, say a few words about myself. I'm Sara. I'm working from Mauro Molino um, since 2018. So it's already two years that I'm uh, here with the team and uh, I'm in charge of hospitality, um, marketing, and then uh, I'm also in charge of some uh, markets in Europe. So I really uh, love uh, the um, coordinate or the re relationships with our importer in Europe. Um, Mauro Molino is a family estate founded by Mauro in 1982, so it's a quite young uh, winery. Uh, Martina and Matteo, the children of Mauro, are managing the company at the moment. The, mom, uh, the, the winery is quite uh, dynamic, but always related to the tradition, so to the, to the roots, the past. Uh, we are located in La Morra, so La Morra is uh, uh, one of the most important places for the production of Barolo. So as you can imagine, we are mostly focused on uh, Nebbiolo and then Barolo production. Uh, we are a familiar company, so it, the company is not so big. We own 16 hectares and we produce 120,000 bottles per year. The majority of them is for sure Barolo since our focus is, uh, is this wine. And today I'm here with our uh, partner from Thais Wine, so our importer in Denmark. And uh, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself, uh, just to explain uh, what you do in, uh, in your, uh, I mean, what's your job and what you care, cares about. Well, uh, first and foremost, yeah, of course I work for, for Taste Wine, uh, proudly enough, but I, I'm, I'm the Swedish uh, person in, 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 uh, in Taste, uh, so uh, please, uh, all Danes, don't uh, condemn me for not speaking Danish or having the accent of a Dane. Uh, I run the, the Swedish department, the sales Swedish department, and um, I'm based in, in Denmark, so I travel a lot back and forth. I'm just trying to copy-paste what, what my professional um, uh, colleagues do in Denmark to 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 mimic it in Sweden, uh, and um, yeah, uh, I'm a sommelier. I'm I'm finishing off my my diploma. Uh, I've worked for Taste Wine now for one and a half years. Time flies. Uh, very much happy to have a, a very broad portfolio with wines such as yours that um, uh, are pleasing to serve and and um, uh, and represent. And um, yeah, what else do I do? I've, I've lived it before in, in, in your country and your lovely Piedmont yeah. myself, where I worked um, both in a, in, um, in a winery called Teretto and I worked okay. as a sommelier in a restaurant called uh, um, Piazza Duomo. Uh, yeah, that was a lovely period of my life. I still miss my Sundays with the nocciole, the, the chocolate um, uh, Ferrero Rocher like uh, you know, <laughs> smells that come out from, from, from the society as well as the truffles. So, yeah, that's, it. that's a bit about me. And, um, yeah, so that we've got a bit of a, a notion. I know what you do and yeah, I know where you live. I've seen it before. It's, it's yeah, just... yeah, you're quite familiar with the area. So, you, I mean, it, I suppose it was a great experience. I love this place. I love where, where we are. So, it's an amazing place. It's so unique, I think. Yeah into into the into Piemonte and into Italy so that's that's nice yeah. so today um, we would like to focus a little bit on the most important grape of our uh, uh, production that for sure is the king of the grape is the Nebbiolo that's why I called the must like Nebbiolo masterclass it was funny to uh, have a good uh, overview about this grape and about the wines that we can produce uh, from this uh, from this grape um, so Nebbiolo is uh, for sure uh, for us and for the most the other companies in uh, in Piemonte the really the the most important grape variety that we are growing in particular uh, with Nebbiolo we are producing the Lange Nebbiolo so the basic expression of Nebbiolo and then we are producing uh, five different Barolos. Mm. Uh, would, you mind, in... would you mind ex explaining for, for our customers um, what, what Lange Nebbiolo is? Yes, sure. So Lange Nebbiolo is uh, the basic expression, the basic denomination that we can get with the Nebbiolo grapes. Um, it, comes, it can come from uh, 54 uh, different villages around Alba. 
also the, um, the place of production of uh, Langene Biolo is uh, quite, uh, quite big, respect big. Barolo, for example, in, because for Barolo we can only use grapes coming from 11 vintages, so it's uh, much smaller. Yeah. Uh, so with, uh, yes, with uh, Langene Biolo, uh, we don't have so many rules about uh, the aging process because uh, we can put in a biolo in a steel tanks or we can put in a biolo in a big barrels and barriques, so oak aging. In case of our uh, lung in a biolo, so we are using the uh, big barrels for uh, uh, six months, so we do a quite short aging before bottling the wine. You're talking they, about the botti, the Italian botti? Uh, yes, the Italian botti, exactly. It's a uh, 52 hectoliters size, mm -hmm. so it's already quite big. And uh, we put the wine uh, only for a very short time because the, our idea behind Langine Biolo is uh, to produce a very easy drinking and pleasant wine. A wine mm -hmm. that uh, doesn't need uh, too much time to be open, to be drinkable. So mm -hmm. that's the reason uh, why we are also using a part of uh, Roero grapes. Because mm -hmm. our Langine Biolo is a combination between um, grapes coming from La Morra and grapes coming from Roero. The mm -hmm. Roero side is characterized by sandy soil and that's the reason why our Nebbiolo is so elegant, so uh, approachable and uh, in my opinion is really um, perfect to drink now. So it's soft tannins, a very uh, high aromaticity. Yeah. Can you explain where, where Roero is? I think that Roero is an, is an area that not right now is like um, like a theme to speak about considering that uh, uh, it is a cheaper area it's just been ex people are experimenting a lot with the area etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah. um, I think it's very important to tell uh, everybody where, where it is and and um, how much it's grown in the in the recent years yeah exactly um, because uh, I, th I think that everyone knows the Barolo area but uh, if you are speaking about uh, location the Barolo area is located in the uh, right part of the river Tanaro while Roero is located in the left in the yeah. left side so they are um, two uh, important area for the production of wine Roero is uh, actually uh, is becoming very important in the last years as you suggested because um, there are still many um, vineyards available to buy. Uh, the price of the land is for sure lower. And uh, the expression, in our opinion, is so amazing, very different mm. from the Lange uh, mm. area, uh, mm. since we have a, different, uh, a difference in the soil. But uh, in any way, it, it gives the wine a very, very nice uh, approachability, very nice expression in terms of uh, perfumes, in terms of... Uh, um, uh, I would say yes, approachability. That's that's uh, I think uh, why many producers uh, they are investing in Roero as we did. Yeah, it's it's a good thinking. Yeah, exactly. What what type of soil do you have in in Roero compared to, for example, well, Barolo has two different types. If it's a uh, uh, Tanaro right or left bank, but but. Uh, in Roero, exactly what, what is the, uh, in the Roero, terroir? Yeah, in Roero, we have a majority of sand. So the soil is very rich in, uh, in sand. Uh, yeah. Sand is a quite a poor material, quite poor mm. earth. And that's yeah. the reason why the wines are um, uh, less structured, uh, less tannic, but uh, uh, more perfumed. So yeah. it's a different yeah. expression of, uh, of, uh, of the same grape that uh, uh, is grown in Lange or in Roero has a different expression. And that's, uh, mm. I, I think, the very interesting uh, thing about wine. So mm. it really depends uh, where you are growing your grapes. Yeah, yeah. I agree completely with that. And, and going towards uh, um, the Barolos that we're going to talk about uh, in the area of La Morre, if I'm not, um, you have to correct me if I'm, I'm, I'm wrong here, but it's uh, also more towards the clayiness. Uh, and as you say, it's got a, a higher uh, spectrum of... of um, aromas and maybe even uh, the tannins are a bit softer in its sense it's more compact and uh, uh, what would I say uh, more velvety more maybe a, a silkier and cashmere tones of the tannins which is also an yeah. expression of of a uh, nebbiolo that that uh, expresses the tannins very astringent and and a very um, you know uh, dryingness in, yes. in, in, yes, yeah, yeah. in its I agree. style so, so uh, even though uh, clay is maybe not seen as the the best option, Nebbiolo seems to quite like it somehow. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, so that is the part of 
lange. Uh, if we go to, for example, Barolo, you've got two types. Well, you've got the right bank and the left bank. And um, uh, where, where do we have your vineyards? Your vineyards are in La Morra. Yeah, exactly. The majority awesome. of our vineyards are located in La Morra, where we have the, the winery. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, vineyards in a different uh, MGA, so in different vineyards, different additional geographical mentions. Yeah. Um, in particular, for example, if we are speaking about uh, the classic Barolo, mm -hmm. uh, that is the entry level, so is the, actually the most important one of the company in terms of uh, production quantity. Uh, we, have, uh, we are using vineyards coming from the upper part of La Morra. Uh, the denomination is called Berry. We are using vineyards coming from the lower part of La Morra in Annunciata, near the winery. Mm -hmm. And the third part of this wine is coming from Perno. So in case of uh, the classic Barolo, we are using a small component from Monforte. Mm -hmm. that, is, uh, that is nice to, to see inside the wine because, uh, uh, as you suggested, in, uh, in La Morra we have majority of limestone, so wines are a little bit more approachable. Wine in Monforte, we have the Elvetian soil, so more compact, uh, uh, rich in clay. And mm -hmm. uh, again, respect yeah. the sand of Roero, uh, a different expression. So we are blending the two uh, uh, terroir together in yeah. order to get more the elegance from La Morra mm -hmm. and more the structure and complexity from Monforte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Serra Lunga, yeah, right. The limestone and the, the potassium. That's also that gives a, a, actually a firmness and, and it helps out the Nebbiolo grape with the alka alkalinity. The soil helps out the alkalinity to bring the... Um, what would we say the the the, uh, the high uh, acidity of the of the grape itself? It's not only very tannic, but it's also very acidic. Eh? So yeah. To control and to tame uh, tame all of that, uh, the soil type that you were describing, both the uh, limestone and the clay, would uh, would help to. Uh, to make it more elegant as you exactly to have both the to all the characteristics that a barolo has to has to have in order to be nice to drink now but at the same time suitable for a very long aging exactly exactly so can you please tell us what what uh, i mean what crews do you have i mean what uh, um uh, what uh, what wines do you do you have that are more specific in a terroir that are not uh, only blended as a, as a, a base Barolo? Yeah. I mean, we had together with the classic Barolo that we have described now, we also have uh, uh, four different single vineyards. Uh, mm -hmm. Together, today we will try for uh, the Galinotto. So Galinotto is the first of our single vineyards Barolo. And uh, uh, then we have Barolo uh, La Serra, Barolo Bucuciani and Barolo and Conca. Conca. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, differently from uh, the first uh, Barolo, uh, the single vineyards are um, wines coming from a one uh, small specific plot. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, uh, all the intensity, uh, the deepness uh, and the expression of the vineyard is more present in the wine. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if the classic Barolo, it, con it is considered like the... Um, I would say the most traditional uh, expression of Barolo in case of single vineyards, you really feel, taste and smell the expression of the vineyard. Mm -hmm. So in mm -hmm. case of Galinotto, for example, um, since the vineyard is located in the upper part of La Morra at 400 meters of altitude, we have mm -hmm. a very good freshness in the wine. Yeah, yeah. And, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and the mm -hmm. wine is really rich in mint and eucalypto notes that... Uh, um, in my opinion, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really the direct expression of this vineyard because uh, before the harvest season, we have uh, a lot of changes of temperature between day and night. And this is important for the development of the aromaticity. So this, this is the reason why Galinotto is so expressive in terms mm -hmm. of uh, aromaticity. Mm -hmm. So please, uh, well, whilst now we're speaking about it, um... We're serving the Barolos from 2015. Obviously, we're serving a Lange and from 2018. And 2018 Barola has not really come out yet. But how was the vintage of 2015 for everybody 2000, that's drinking it? 2015 was uh, a great vintage. It is considered among uh, the hot vintages because, I mean, the, the climate uh, was quite warm in summertime. But we had a very uh, good uh, um, 
uh, snowfalls during winter time that provide us a very nice uh, uh, water reserve for summertime. So mm -hmm. we arrived at the time of the harvest with uh, uh, perfect, uh, healthy and um, safe grapes. And uh, in my opinion, Barolos coming from 2015 vintage are very concentrated but supported with a good freshness. So they are very balanced. Mm. And this is important because Barolos coming from 15 are so nice to drink now, but at the same time, they have a great potential of aging. And what did you, a... when did you pick in, 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 uh, in uh, the 2015? When, when, the when 2015 you... was Submit? the first two weeks of uh, October. October. So Which we is... were more or less, I mean, more or less in the average, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. And what I would, I would really want to talk about, which I found very interesting when I moved to, to, um, uh, to Italy and we harvested at uh, Tereto, for example, to, to uh, uh, know the over-organization, which Italians are not known for. Uh, but in this case, it's like the grapes that are grown in uh, Piedmont, uh, obviously, uh, it's mostly uh, Nebbiolo, uh, of course. We have Dolcetto di Alba, we have Barbera di Alba, uh, in, in the Roero... Um, area we have uh, of course arnais which is the, the white grape you you're starting to to um, uh, to to experiment a bit with chardonnay etc cetera, etc cetera, which i also think that you have in the whole of your portfolio if I'm, I'm not incorrect yes we have a small production of chardonnay as well yeah and arnais obviously we have all of these in the portfolio for for our customers to to purchase if they're interested in them but uh, obviously nebbiolo is nebbiolo but the, the, the thing that I found so, so, um, so professional in the agriculture side is that uh, the picking of the grapes are very organized. So Nebbiolo is the last grape to be picked yeah. uh, compared to, for example, Lolcetto di Alba, which is, um, uh, if I'm uh, not incorrect, it's like a more rustique uh, grape and, and it, it uh, matures easier and, and yeah. faster. So there's always an organization of like, do, do, do. we're picking this first, but then we're picking that, and then we're picking that. And then lastly, we will pick Nebbiolo because it flowers early, but yeah. it ripens late. Exactly. Correct? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And also, if we are speaking about Nebbiolo, there, there are also differences in the vineyards. So, for example, um, the vineyard that we usually harvested, like the last one, is always La Serra, because yeah. it's located again in the upper part. So, usually, mm. uh, it gets to ripeness later than the other single vineyards so we before the harvest time we have to check the maturity of the grapes so we do kind of samples uh, we pick some small uh, grapes and then we analyze the sugar level the acid level inside mm -hmm. and when we are sure that the wine the grape is ripe in this moment we have to 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 harvest so is a it's really important. For example, in 2015, it was very important because the, the weather was very good in October and mm -hmm. we could pick the perfect date of ripeness. Yeah. Sometimes it happens that you have to wait a couple of years because uh, it's raining or mm. maybe because the weather is not so good. But in case of 15, we really got the, the perfect balance in the grape when we harvested. Mm -hmm. How long do you usually harvest for? How many days is your harvest period? Uh, so if you think that we start with Arnais at the beginning of September, mm -hmm. uh, so Arnais is a very small production, so usually in a couple of days it's, it's finished, then we harvest the Chardonnay, mm -hmm. uh, then Dolcetto, then the Barberas, and at the end, as you, as you told me before already, the Nebbiolo. So usually we start uh, at the beginning of September and we finish around the middle of October, mm -hmm. but it's not... Uh, all day harvesting it's just maybe two days of harvesting then we wait one week then another okay. day for the you know because we yeah. have to wait the grape yeah and uh, yeah. so but okay. more or less is a one month and a half well see good for you that's what i'm saying with the organization in piedmont that that strikes me with uh, uh with impressness i'm very impressed of how you um maybe it's just um, by luck but um the, how, how the grapes are differently picked according to to um uh, to its ripeness and um and then you see you you've got time to pick uh, Arnie, and then you have uh, the chardonnay and then lastly uh, obviously the the barolos uh, because they need the time to ripen so can you tell me one of the biggest assets um, uh, of of the grape and the temperature what is um, the most important 
thing to to know about the the climate in in Barolo, obviously, that also reflects um, that is also reflected on the name Nebbia Nebbiolo. Yeah, sure. What, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Piemonte uh, has always been known for to be a kind of very foggy place. Mm -hmm. So um, that's also the, the origin of the name of the grape. I mean, uh, Nebbiolo comes from Nebbia, that, in Ita that is an Italian word to define the fog. Um, actually, for Nebbiolo, we have two possible origins, because the first one comes from Nebbia, ne so from the, the fog when we, are, when we harvested in the past, because in the past the harvest was made even uh, later, so like end of October. Uh, because uh, the weather was colder and so the, the, uh, the grapes uh, got to uh, ripeness later. Yeah, but then, even if, I, if I'm not incorrect, in, even in the 18, well, early 1900s, they picked in even in November. And, yes. uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Quite I mean, late. In the past, it was super, super late. Yeah. Um, it was not possible to pick a, at the beginning of October because the grape were not yet uh, ripe. Mm -hmm. And however, even if we uh, were waiting for many more days, uh, the acidic and the tannins uh, inside the grape were quite higher respect now. So mm -hmm. now, for example, 2016, 2015, 2019, uh, we picked around the middle of October. Uh, mm -hmm. But since the temperatures were higher in summertime, we got a very good ripeness in the grapes. And that's also important in order mm -hmm. to have a good balance in the wine. So, yes, I was explaining Nebbia. So the first one is the, the origin. And then uh, some other people think that... Uh, uh, Nebbiolo comes also, the name Nebbiolo comes also from the bloom, so the protein that covers the grapes. In fact, yeah. if, you, if, you th if you take a grape of Nebbiolo, it's not actually uh, blue or violet. Uh, I mean, the, the main color is for sure violet, but then you have a, a very small, uh, how can I say, coverage, like mm -hmm. white coverage on the grape. And this is the bloom, the protein that covers the grapes. And that mm -hmm. protects also the grapes. Yeah, from yeah, from both uh, from both uh, uh, too much cold or too much sun, exactly. without a doubt. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. That's a, that's a characteristic that uh, if, uh, if I'm aware, there's there's uh, not many places in the world that use it. And uh, now, for example, I did tell you, uh, ask you a couple of days ago. It's like we should like try to understand the, the uh, Nebbiolo itself. It's it's um, uh, it's a, a, a grape that ha wears a crown, uh, and obviously it comes. Um, it comes originally from Piedmont, eh? but there are a couple of people using them. For example, uh, I would say in Sonoma, um, yeah, Santa Barbara, you've got Adelaide Hills and everything. But all of, all of these places, uh, what I understand, they, they, uh, they have the same characteristics uh, of climate than, than, than you have in Piedmont. That is the fog, um, cold temperature during the evenings, and then just a protection of some type. Uh, in form of fogs and uh, a, a slight humidity, which the grape doesn't literally like very much, but uh, but with the fog and late ripening, so uh, long periods of sun that don't burn the grape. Yeah, um, exactly. But obviously, uh, Piedmont is the spot where the, where the grape is uh, is uh, uh, generally uh, from, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean. Uh... Uh, people started to plant Nebbiolo also in uh, some other places, but um, the, the, the mm -hmm. results are very different. Yeah, that's what the about in Italy? Why, yeah, that's the reason why Nebbiolo is so unique, because mm -hmm. you can find Nebbiolo in Piemonte, in this area. Uh, then you can find some Nebbiolo in uh, Valtellina, so in the northern part of Lombardy. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find Nebbiolo also in uh, Aosta Valley, so in, uh, again in the northern part of Italy. Uh, mm. Actually, in these two places, uh, Nebbiolo also changes the name. So oh. here it's called Nebbiolo. In uh, Valtellina, it's called Chiave Nasca. Mm. And in uh, Aosta Valle, it's called Picotendro. Yeah. Again, yes. the expression is different because they have a different soil. Mm. Uh, but you can understand the similarities with our uh, mm. Nebbiolo, Barolo, Barbaresco. Mm -hmm. However, yes, the, the perfect place for Nebbiolo is this area, Piemonte. Uh, northern part of Lombardy and Avaosta Valley. Mm, 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 mm. It needs, um, uh, as we said, a bit of coldness and long periods of ripeness. Eh? Uh, 
Am I yeah, because it's right early now? early uh, flowering mm -hmm. and then late ripening. So it's extremely sensitive to, uh, sensitive to the climate. And mm -hmm. that's also the reason why it's so difficult to reproduce uh, the expression that we have here in other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you're doing it quite well and you've had some years of experiment, uh, experimenting with, with the grapes. So you're, you're getting the hang out of it. But there is, a, if, I, if I'm, I'm, I'm correct, there is a bit of a, uh, an issue between uh, the old school and the new school and, for example, let us say, yeah, the modernists and the, the conservatists. Uh, so where, where, where about is Mauro Molino in the style of, of the, uh, how you use the Nebbiolo grape? Yeah, okay. Um, what do you do? Yeah, uh, yes, this is always a very interesting question to, to ask and also to reply, uh, I think. Um, so if we speak about uh, uh, Mauro Molino, the first uh, uh, important thing to say is that we are focused uh, on the quality of the, mm -hmm. of the quality of our wines. So to do this, uh, we are uh, mixing, uh, if we can say in this way, the two styles, so these two approaches. Uh, we have to say that when Mauro Molino started in the early uh, 80s, he was quite influenced by the use of barriques. So uh, with the new approach. In fact, he started to produce Conca, Barolo Conca, in barriques. Mm. So he, this was the first wine that he, he bottled, he bottled mm. in, 2000, uh, in uh, 1982. Mm. Uh, with the time passing, he also understood that some of our wines had a better, better expression with the, the uh, traditional approach. So in that case, with uh, Botti, uh, mm -hmm. Big Barrels, uh, and that's the reason why today uh, Martina mm. and Matteo decided to have uh, some wines with the, the traditional approach. Mm -hmm. It's the case of, for example, these two, the mm -hmm. Nebbiolo and the Barolo. Yep. And some wines, uh, for example, the Cru, that still have a more modern style. So yep. with the use of barrique. It's important to know that we want our wines to be expression of the land, to be expression of the vineyard, and not expression of the wood, of the oak. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the reason why also uh, if we are using barriques, we are using only a very small part of new oak each year. And all our barriques are very light toasted. So how much? How much? How much uh, uh, new barrique do you use? How much it's percentage? It's usually between the twenty and the thirty percent, so mm -hmm. one third on the total. And, and where does your barriques? Where does your wood come from? Is it French? Is it from it's, Slovenia? Yes, it's, it's yeah. always French oak. We are mm -hmm. using the both for barriques and for big barrels. We are using just the French oak because we think that uh, French oak is the um, the best oak that we can use. Uh, uh, for our wines, since uh, all of them are very elegant and we want to keep the elegance in, uh, in, uh, also during the productive processes. So that's mm -hmm. the reason why we are using only French. Mm -hmm. And who is your cooper, if I may ask? Um, um, the, the producer? No, the of... cooper. The cooper, the, the producer of the yeah, episodes. Exactly. Um, uh, we have... Yeah. Uh, uh, Maybe you have different because it's the we body many, is very... Yeah, we yeah. have many different uh, producers. Uh, at the moment, Quinta Sans is, for example, mm -hmm. the name of some uh, of the producer of some barriques. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He's from yes, he's from France, France. And for the big ones, we are also using some French oak coming from Austria. So the producer mm -hmm. is from Austria. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. What about your body? Because um, this is a phenomenon about um, uh, the oak that is. Um, uh, transported to, for example, the wines from a body, which is how many liters does a body? Uh, uh, we, are use, we are using 52 hectoliters uh, mm -hmm. usually. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, from last year's, uh, we have also introduced some uh, 24 and a half hectoliters. So it's mm -hmm. a kind of half body. Yeah. And, uh, and then we are also using some uh, truncane con barrel. So it's more oh. like, uh, it's not just a round, it's a little bit more truncane, of 30 hectoliters. So mm -hmm. we have different size according okay. to the wine that we want to produce. Mm -hmm. And how many times do you wash the, 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 the barriques of body? How many times do you use it? For barriques, it's usually three passages. So ah. it means six years, so three different vintages of Barolo. 
and uh, and then we change them. Yeah. So we wash them for three times. Yeah, and, and, but uh, the but body is very yeah, different. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. With body, yeah. the, the thing is different because uh, we can uh, easily uh, keep them for much more time. Mm -hmm. So usually our the average... Uh, um, of our body is around uh, 10 to 15 years. Oh, okay. even Yeah, even, yeah. even more, but for the moment, our body are still quite young. Hmm. What do you reckon is the difference between, for example, using a barrique or using a body? What is the, uh, what is the characteristic of the, the style of this traditionalist? What, what do they want to achieve with the body uh, um, barriques, that's it, to say? Yeah, um, I mean, the, the, we with have the Neviolo. Yeah, we have a different uh, expression if we are using uh, the big barrels or barriques. Uh, as you can understand, in a barriques, we have more um, contact between the wine and the wood. So the wine is oxygenating and is changing before. So usually in a barriques, uh, the, the oxygen sensation is a little bit more present. Uh, mm -hmm. In case of botti, we have less contact. So this uh, uh, aging... Is, uh, um, is, a li is a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why usually when we are using the big barrels, the, um, uh, the expression of the oak is not so present inside the wine. I was but the, looking I'm at respons the, yeah. responding to the question that Botti is spelled B-O-T-T-I. I, exactly. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, uh, quite yeah. simple um, uh, in that sense, yeah. Yeah, but that's a, char a character. Nebi uh, Nebbiolo comes from, from uh, Piedmont and Botti also comes from Piedmont, if I'm not incorrect. This, uh, the whole of Italy used it in, in, in different areas, but, but I, I think it's originally from, from the north part of, uh, yes, of Italy. Yes, I mean, the ones that we are using are not from Italy, but uh, no. you can find some, uh, some Botti also in Italy. Yeah, sure, yeah sure, but sure. The, style, well, the style of the style is huge. Not, exactly. The style is uh, super from... Uh, is, is the old approach in Piemonte. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, talking about the traditionalists before they only used Botti uh, and, and um, uh, the differences between the, the uh, traditionalists and the, the modernists is that maybe uh, the grape Nebbiolo is a very astringent grape and uh, the extraction of the, of, the, uh, of the tannins of the grapes uh, was made since the... the um, the color of the the grape is, is is as you say it's it's a bit wider it's it's not a, got a, a firm black structured uh, color um, the extraction of the color and the tannins was made by by a fermentation that was maybe twenty to thirty days uh, but the modernists use another perspective and they they maybe used maybe between seven to to ten fifteen days uh, where do you stand in that in that um uh, yes, in, in that perspective. Yeah, in case of fermentation, we are usually uh, using uh, two weeks of fermentation for our barolos. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, this means that uh, we try to extract uh, all what we need, but we don't want to extract too much uh, uh, green tannins, uh, too much uh, astringency, as you suggested before. Yeah. So that's the reason why we are using... Uh, um, I mean, two weeks of maceration on this. Yes, yeah. yeah, which is enough and controlled temperature also. Exactly. Use, yes, yeah. the controlled temperatures. Yeah, controlled yeah. temperature, which will keep the aromas. And, exactly. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was just reading the. the uh, where is Mauro? Mauro. Mauro is uh, still with us. So he's um, he really loves uh, working in the vineyards. So he's, uh, he's, before being a, a winemaker, he also was an agronomist. So mm. he really cares about uh, the vineyards. And uh, we can say that uh, at the moment he's uh, still with us, uh, working mostly in the vineyards. Matteo is working mostly in the winery, so making mm -hmm. the wines. And Martina is in charge of the commercial part. So, yeah. 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 so we, uh, well, they are well distributed uh, family. Yeah, exactly, all yes. the different sectors. Yeah, yeah, Hi yeah. there, family. I, hopefully I will come and visit with... Uh, uh, with the John at some point and, and the sales team from, from Denmark uh, very soon after this COVID uh, period. Yeah, um, you will be the super welcome to come to visit us when you grazie. want, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's so much to talk about um, 
about the grapes and the styles and everything. Uh, but what is the time? We really have to maybe get to, yeah, tasting the wine. Yeah, and, yeah. I, right? I would say yes, because we just have... Uh, Sarah, I told you. I, yes. I told you that I this know, was, it was I like know, but rush, it's difficult so. just to stop talking about wine and... Uh, but we exactly. have to, yeah, we have to divide yeah. our time. We start exactly. with the Nebbiolo. I do yeah. a very short introduction about this wine and then uh, you will uh, explain us uh, what do you think. Yeah. Uh, so Lange Nebbiolo is one of, of our most important wine. It's, uh, as I told you already, a combination of two different vineyards. The idea is to produce a very easy drinking and pleasant Nebbiolo. So very short aging in big barrels and then we bottle the wine. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? What uh, I, I'm, I'm quite curious about uh, uh, some uh, Swedish and Danish uh, uh, receipts to to pair with. Mm, okay. Well, first, first and foremost, um, this is a very approachable wine. It's got more towards ne Nebbiolo for me is a is a grape that is um, uh, apart from the astringent sea, the tar. Uh, the well, depending on the areas, if it's from Barolo Barbaresco, and uh, obviously the the rose tones um, that are very stereotypically anise, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, I would say that this wine is very approachable in the sense that it's a, um, a regular wine that you can drink with 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 uh, with a lot of meals. Uh, it's got it. It's got a tone of like, it's got a maturity and it's got a warmth like a, a soothing warmth and more towards the, the black fruit. It's a mixed, uh, I would say, black and red fruit. Uh, obviously, I always tend to, to say that it, uh, since this is a fruit that always um, is very approachable here in, in Scandinavia, the lingonberries, the uh, hippos, uh, uh, the uh, red currants um, in, in, in Denmark, um, uh, everybody in, uh, that comes from Denmark has a jello uh, of a red currant in, in the fridge. And in Sweden, they have um, a lingonberry mar marmalade, uh, which is paired with everything. Also, like you guys eat bread, we eat lingonberries huh? <laughs> and, and uh, red currants. So, so uh, that is very approachable in that sense. But I can see also that there's a lot of black food. There's a sooth soothness uh, in, in the maturity of the, of, the, of the wine compared to how elegant and strict the Nebbiolo can be in, in um, more, maybe as you say, the single vineyards. And, and yeah, it's, it's really approachable in that sense. So um, this is a, a wine that I would say the, uh, it's not completely fully bodied. It's, um, it's still very um, playful and um, uh, you can pair it with everything from chicken uh, above. And if you've got it, even if you want to pair with some fish, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a wild guess here, but uh, with a marulke that we would call it in, in, in Danish and Swedish and some truffle sauce and some red wine sauce, this could go fantastically. Well, I think that all, the whole range could, could do that, uh, extending us to the fish side. Um, but all in all, in general, I must say that, that um, the, the, the approachness of your wines in general and um, the the astrogen sea that usually is being seen in in in, um, uh, in the Nebbiolo grapes and the Barolo area is uh, obviously um, uh, it's a, it's a check. You can understand that this this wine has its terroir, and you can blind taste this and say this is from here and here, of course. But it's uh, uh, the tannins are very silky. And, yeah, um, yeah, they I represent uh, a very you know, soothing uh, way, uh, which makes it approachable to drink now. Exactly. And, um, and even in, in a couple of years, we can maybe speak about this um, shortly also. But uh, as I said, this wine is, you can literally eat it with, uh, with uh, fricadelle. Sorry, fricadelle. I, I, will, I, I will just reply to one question because uh, someone asked for how many vineyards inside Langene Biolo? Two vineyards. One coming from La Morra and the second one coming from Roero, from Guarena. So we are blending the two terroir, just to be clear. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what about the Lange? The Lange, we, uh, you can put in the technical details. Uh, you said that it was uh, uh, stainless steel and it, it's... No, a short aging in oak, short aging in big barrel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then, I mean, the fermentation in steel tanks. Yeah, two weeks. Uh, malolactic fermentation in steel tanks, mm -hmm. uh, short aging in oak, and then mm -hmm. we bottle mm -hmm. the wine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the malolactic will help to round down the acidity of the wine and exactly. just make it a bit, a bit warmer and soothing, as I'm, I'm talking about. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, the color, obviously, it's a, it's a 2018. We did not speak. We did speak about the vintage of 2015. What about the 2018? How was the vintage then? Yeah, and 2018 was uh, another uh, amazing vintage. Uh, again, warm, in particular in summertime, but with the good rainfalls during uh, the spring and then summertime. So the vines didn't suffer any water stress. And it is very important in order to get a balanced wine. Uh, wines from 2018 are like this one I think extremely delicate mm. um, with a good balance and soft tannins that's the reason why I think that uh, 2000 that this Nebbiolo is really the perfect expression of the vintage because it's mm. so amazing so pleasant mm. even now so I think that uh, if you want to keep for sure is Nebbiolo so you can keep it for three four five years Mm. But if you want to drink in tonight, it's perfect to drink now. No, 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 absolutely, absolutely. I, 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 I this, um, it's structured in the sense that it's got a warmness, and and um, I'm not, I'm, I'm uh, tasting these wines with you right now, and I'm not even eating anything uh, with it. So um, uh, usually, like high high tannin uh, wines and high acidic wines require some some um, obviously some fat to to melt down the the tannins that might be astringent and dry, uh, mouth. Yeah. Uh, coating and dry uh, and some salt but um i'm just drinking this pleasantly yeah and just um, exactly uh, put a temperature down just with one degree a little it's, bit uh, in summertime very playful you want to chill a little bit uh Tempo. like usually it's perfect to drink them between 16 18 but in summertime if you want to drink it the 14 16 is mm. uh, is perfect yeah can exactly. we Follow with the second. Yeah, sure. I just want to uh, want to just uh, late, say the last things that I did forget yeah. to say about the uh, black and red fruit because we're probably going to go to the more elegant style right now with the baro the barolos. Uh, but um, there, we can definitely note the the violets. You have some some black cherries, eh? and this is very particular to 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 underline because usually I usually find more red fruit, but here you have both of the things, eh? and dry, dried strawberries, eh? very elegant dried strawberries, eh? and making the wine very, as I say, playful. You can, you can pair it with very many things, so you've yeah. got a, a sweetness to it eh? also. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go to the Barolo. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's just because we don't have time. So, classic Barolo, uh, is our ambassador in terms of style and volume, so it's the most important wine of the company. This is a blended Barolo, so it comes from three different vineyards, two of them in La Morra and one of them in Monforte. This mm -hmm. is the ambassador of Mauro Molino, so it's the most important wine of the company. Now mm -hmm. I have a 16, because 15 mm -hmm. is sold out, for sure you still have, but in the winery we don't have any more. But uh, yes, I mean, you will, uh, you will find the 16, uh, 15 at size Vine, and uh, both of them are two uh, very nice vintages, I, I think. Again, uh, what's your opinion about this wine? Well, I've got the 15, and like most of our clients have bought, the, the, there's a couple of people here today that have uh, uh, brought the whole flight. And um, uh, yeah, this is very elegant. It's, um, it's a young lady that, uh, that, uh, and that expresses, um, uh, as I say, the, the tannins of, of the classic Nebbiolo, uh, but in a very soothing and, and uh, elegant way. I would say that the, the fruit goes more towards the red, uh, like wild raspberries and uh, even uh, I'm going to return to the to the lingon berries and all of that but I did open these um, one and a half uh, uh, hours ago and uh, and now they're just like literally like blooming out and and, and expressing themselves um, and the tar the tar uh, is also somewhere in the behind which is also an expression of the grape uh, but you also have the flowers the delicate flowers that 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 makes a nebbiolo come from the area that it, that, that, that it comes from. Um, but as in fruit, I would say red fruit, uh, which is elegant, uh, high acidity, uh, astringency, but in a silky way, there's a velvetiness that, that, that um, uh, um, possesses your tongue in, that, in the way that it just like is soothing in, in the tongue. And then, and then you have this um, freshness, a green tone of uh, fresh uh, fennel seeds, that always brings these, um, makes the Barolos uh, importantness and seriousness become a bit more sharp and, and fresh in that sense. Eh? And, and, and I really can see it come forward. 
let's say. Great. Yeah. I just replied to one question that has just arrived. 2015 highly rated vintage. Is this 2016 as good as Harvest of Grapes? Uh, so I have to say that 2016 is uh, it could it can be considered even better than 15. I mean, 15 is uh, is an amazing vintage. Uh, both of them are two great vintages. We are very happy to to go to one after the other two amazing vintages. But in terms of 16, uh, we have more the tension. We have more the deepness in the wine, and the 16. Uh, will be an amazing vintage to keep. So uh, when I speak uh, with Matteo about vintages, uh, he uh, says that uh, 16 is the vintage of the century. So it's really something that uh, uh, neither him or his father uh, have seen before. So That's the year that I lived there, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's for this reason you were there. Yeah, so. well, <laughs> absolutely. No, so I mean, no, uh, but 16 I is amazing, but uh, you will, I, I suppose you will have a 16 available on the market soon. And mm -hmm. um, 16 is a great vintage to keep. So, if, or to, 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 yes, to, to keep in the cellar, to, 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 give, to give a gift to, to someone, the 16 is amazing. What would you say, I mean, we're talking about keeping or drinking uh, right now. There's a lot of our clients that are, you know, it's like, how many years can I keep? And they, they yeah, obviously, it's a, sometimes it's a, a big investment to, to buy a, a case of Barolo. Uh, for me, uh, all of these wines, we're going to talk about the last one, uh, Linotto, uh, just uh, straightforwardly quite not now. But I'm going to underline the, the accessibility of uh, Mauro Molino's wines should both be drank now today uh, and even be kept. And um, a personal... Uh, approach towards this is that maybe it's fun if you have like a photographic memory to open one here and then another next year and then another to see the evolution of the wines and yeah um, and I've, uh, I've been privileged to to been drinking your wines for very many years and uh, both in taste fine or being a customer for taste fine in sweden and uh, with different restaurants and to see the evolution is just uh, mesmerizing so, um, so that's a good option to do. But, but I think that the vintage of 2015 and the most people that have bought these wines today and are, are with us having this tasting, uh, it's definitely approachable to drink today. Yeah, and it could exactly. be kept for, for more than, I would say, more than 10, 15 years, yeah, considering sure. the acidity. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. I have another question. Should you decant the wine before consuming um, I give my opinion, then you can give you, uh, the, you can also give yours. Um, this is a young vintage. So in my opinion, if you, if you open it one hour, two hours before, and then you leave the wine without the cork like this, the oxygen can enter and the wine can, be, uh, can change a little bit in a very slow way. Um, yeah. Sometimes using the decanter, in my opinion, is like a shock for the wine. So if it's a, an old vintage that maybe can have some sediments on the on the bottom in that case is better to decant I, I think but if it's a young vintage you can just open it before yeah 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 i agree i definitely agree with that but at the same time i think that um uh, decanting wines or it, sometimes it's a bit overrated i think that having a bottle and just letting the wine sailor tone itself from the bottle and just open it, it up and just taking the first class and then lastly two hours later taking the last class the evolution of the wine you see the evolution good, yeah it's, you it's see how important. it changes yeah it's exactly. very important uh, if it's a wine that is too old decanting it will just kill the fruit depending obviously on the wine yeah. so 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 it's a very relative question how many people will be drinking uh, is it a wine that has a lot of tannins and you're going to be 10 people obviously maybe it could be good to decant but um uh, I'm restricted to not decant that much if it's not a h really high tannic uh, wine that is dark. This is more towards the elegant. Yeah. See, so um, so um, yeah, it's um, it's a tricky question. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, I have another question, but then we have uh, only four minutes left. We have uh, so is the Gallinotto is the classic Barolo uh, lighter in color than Gallinotto? Is that the maceration? I would say that is actually the vineyard. So the um, the, the soil that we have in the vineyard that uh, gives the, to Galinotto um, a little bit more in the color because the maceration is more or less the same for the two wines. So it's not really the maceration. Uh, so yes, we try now Galinotto. Galinotto mm -hmm. is the first of our single vineyards, Barolo. 
uh, direct expression of the vineyard located in the upper part of La Morra. Uh, the aging of this wine is made for half quantity in barriques and half quantity in big barrels. So we are using the two um, styles together. Um, and uh, Galinotto, in my opinion, is uh, among our single vineyards, is really the most female expression of Barolo. Yeah, I uh, agree completely. It's a super elegant uh, wine. It does uh, reflect uh, the terroir of what the, both the grape, the, the place, and uh, it's a single vineyardness uh, in the form of the quality. Uh, so there's a firm elegance. There is, um, uh, there is um, how, to, how to describe it, um, the fruit and the, um, uh, the, the palate itself, as well as the nose, describes the thing very firmly. So um, I'm going to go back to the roses again. I, I do feel the roses. It's got a, a touch of wood, which uh, you have just described, considering that you're, you're blending the two different um, um, uh, styles, styles yeah. using, using body and, and barriques. Uh, here in, uh, for me, there's a minerality that is just like so sharp, so, 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 so sharp, uh, that describes the area and uh, without a doubt. And, um, and, uh, I would say that, uh, the elegant red fruit, uh, uh, going towards more, uh, the rose, uh, the, the rose hip, uh, that we do use a lot here in, in Scandinavia. We have them everywhere and right now. They're blooming everywhere as well. And, um, and, um, like the high acidity that is. Uh, three-dimensionally uh, harmonious with each other um, and this could be definitely be paired with uh, well Swedish and Danish foods and um, also the good thing is that well as you may know uh, Sara uh, here in Denmark it's the it's the mecca of, of food I'm not I'm not I'm being objective because I'm the Swedish person but but here you've got the best restaurants of the world. No, and, I know, uh, I know. And I was yeah. in Denmark last year, twice. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. In, uh, I got May to meet you. And, yeah, in May and then in September. And I was uh, really impressed about uh, the elegance mm. and the mm. quality of your restaurants. Yeah, yeah, and no, it's so it's something, uh, yeah, something that is amazing. Mm. And uh, yeah. So, so this is, I mean, a wine that can be combined with, with obviously meats, uh, elegant meats, considering the flowers that, that push it to more the elegant side but also like uh, uh, steaks and, and uh, uh, red, meat, uh, red meat dishes uh, and with a bit of sauce of any type that is um, uh, got some, some fat. I was telling you the elegance of the wine itself uh, uh, with the red fruit, but the seriousness of the tannins, the, the wood that speaks, uh, um, obviously the viticulture uh, behind it with, with, the, um, uh, with the old, uh, old body and, and the new barriques. Uh, but... Um, but the acidity of what the grape has to give, considering that it's a, a, um, a cooler area, Piemonte is in a cooler area, and the grapes ripen. But sometimes, you know, you have to take methods such as canopy and, uh, and the, the area, and, and you pick so much later. And all of these things that, that in this case, uh, you can thoroughly see with the acidity. And what I was telling you was that um, here in Scandinavia, we pickle a lot of things. This is a way of, of balancing like the heavy dishes and, and, uh, and the potatoes with brum uh, that, uh, that we have both in Dan Denmark and, and Sweden. And uh, the acidity of it uh, goes so well with, with uh, pickled uh, um, dishes. Uh, so I think that that's uh, the recommendations that I have if, if there's nobody that wants to ask any questions or more concrete about food. Um, and uh, obviously, people can and, and call us uh, uh, at the office. There's a, a lot of experts that, that know about the wines. And, and um, I think that you are also offering uh, some live tastings with, with the customers, considering the, the, the times right now where we can yeah. do them physically. And, and the tourism, for example, Denmark, Mette, Mette Fredriksen, is not, uh, um, not recommending us uh, uh, here in, in Scandinavia and the Danes to leave the country. Yeah, I know. Um, but uh, you're offering to have uh, tastings um, uh, at Mauro Molino live. Yeah, yeah and, um, exactly. And we have uh, just activated a new project um, that uh, I called uh, the virtual tasting. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, you can book it on our website. It will be uh, like half an hour, 45 minutes of uh, direct contact with us. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can choose a wine that you have in your cellar. Um, mm. any vintage I mean it doesn't matter you just write as uh, I would like to focus on uh, Barolo 13 
and I would like to speak about new projects. I would like to know something new about your winery. And then, uh, I mean, we would be super happy to, to host you virtually in our cellar and mm. to inform you about the, new, the news, about the new projects. For example, yeah. for the people that will come to visit us in the future, uh, we, have, um, we are building a new tasting room and new offices as well. Uh, so the new location should be ready for, I suppose, the next spring. And uh, we will be super happy to host all of you to our winery. Mm. Uh, if you... A lot. I did if not live, really. If you live yeah. in a warmer country and you don't have any wine chiller, what temperature the wine can be? Ah, yeah. uh, yes. I mean, uh, I would say that uh, the best uh, wine condition for uh, to keep to keep a wine, uh, I I would say no more than fifteen degrees. What do you What do you think? No, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly the same. Uh, if you, for example, during a summer summer period for the, the Lange and Eviolo that we're drinking now, you can feel the warmness, which is um, uh, according to the fruits. Uh, the black fruit is always a bit heavier uh, in its uh, character, uh, but uh, also in alcohol. Uh, I think it's got um, probably a couple of um, uh, half a degree more of alcohol. It's 14.5 compared to 14 in the, in the Barolos. Uh, if you just chill it a bit during the summer, uh, 15, 14.8, Bam, perfectness, uh, I would say. And um, yeah, if you don't have a wine cooler, you know, just put it down the sink uh, or some a nice bucket for uh, five minutes, just uh, turning around the bottle uh, could do the trick, I think. Okay, we have another question from your colleagues, I think. Before you finish, could you sum up the similarities and differences in Nebbiolo wines? How uh, can you taste the difference? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can, you can, you can give you, you can give me your opinion. It's uh, okay. Well, I hear from you. I think that um, first and foremost, we are uh, the Nebbiolo. What the first, the yeah, the Lange Nebbiolo that we just tasted uh, has a higher grade of alcohol with with the zero point five percent. The fruit is um, uh, red and black. It's got a soothing warmness towards it because it's it's more mature. I think that also the single vineyards maybe you you pick with more thoroughness. You you want to like pick exactly when the the, the yeah. ripeness is perfect. And then the Nebbiolo from the Lange, the Lange Nebbiolo is maybe picked around the the perfectness for for your your crew periods. So, uh, so I would say that it's red, black fruit. Uh, I would say that it's more mature. Uh, I would say it's um, definitely uh, drinkable now, without a doubt. can be drunk up to five to ten years, but it's uh, more accessible as an all-around wine with the spectrums of everything. Um, the second wine, which is the Barolo, um, it becomes more elegant. I still, I still do believe that now it's showing very much dried fruit obviously it's a couple more years so we're drinking a, a 2018 coming to the barolo started from 2015 which also also shows not only fresh fruit but dried fruit and in this case i think it's a lot of um, um red dried fruit such as uh, strawberries and and um, uh, raspberries uh, with an elegance uh. Uh, then if you compare for example the two barolos uh, the cool barolo compared to to the uh, to the barolos that you, you, you blend, um, you can definitely see a minerality that is, um, is striking. Uh, it's uh, sharp and it's got a, it's got, it, it knows where it's going, I would say. It's got a lot of fennel tones that gives a freshness. Uh, the balance of uh, what the, uh, <laughs> uh, what the, I would say the flowers, the elegance of the flowers, the roses, um, the hip rose, the red fruit, uh, and then obviously the wood, which is more, more, more palpable. Present. Uh, yeah. And the, the typicity of what the tar gives uh, and, and the minerals of, of, uh, of the area um, are definitely there. And obviously the quality is, is striking. So, yeah, I would say that that's um, something that I could compare the, the flight with. And the color also tends to, to be lesser and it's more towards the terracotta 
and compared to the NBA law, which is a 2018, which is more ruby and alive. Yeah, and striking in that sense. I hope I, I could uh, clear that spectrum. Of yeah, the, the you were very we, detailed. Yeah? I mean, uh, very, yeah, yeah, sure. I would say in, to be very, uh, to, to my opinion, to be very, um, how can I say, uh, to, to say things very easily for, for everyone. Uh, in Langene Biolo, uh, it's uh, quite uh, um, uh, common to find uh, some uh, fresh, uh, uh, violet and rose Seven. notes. Mm -hmm. Very, um, I mean, in Langene Biolo, you feel more the freshness in the wine. In case of Barolo, uh, you feel more the, the complexity, the warm side of the wine. You feel more the spiciness. Uh, you feel more the wood, uh, for sure, because the aging is longer. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, in terms of taste, you can feel more the tannins, you can feel more the structure, the potential of aging. So, they are from the same family, but uh, for sure two different expression. One easier and the second one more complex. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't um, know if maybe someone has uh, some other questions, you can write in the comments. We, we have, uh, since uh, we still have some minutes to, to reply. If not, I don't know. Yeah, I did not name the, the, the complexity of the wine, obviously, uh, to, uh, to say that the Galinotto is, is, has got a complexity of a lot of layers of, of taste. And that was what I was trying to, to, uh, to explain before. The acidity is just um, uh, very well balanced with the, the tannins that are also silky in its tone and, and, as I said, cashmere. So it's approachable to drink both now and uh, within 10, 15 years because it has acidity to... to uh, uh, to suspend it and, uh, in that time and point. Uh, and the fruit is still very accessible. Uh, then you've got, obviously, as you say, the spicy notes. And, and um, uh, the typicity is also very important to, to, to drink this wine, for example, blind. And you can say it's like, it's got its roses, it's got its, its red fruit, it's got its minerality, it's got its um, tarness. Eh? So it, 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 you can really understand that the wine comes from the place that it comes from. Sure. Um, so the intervention from the winemaker has been uh, let, let the, if I'm correct, uh, uh, you guys have, have made the, the grape and the terroir also speak uh, very much in the wine uh, yeah. with, with, the, with the amount of intervention and, and um, it's lovely. Something that we didn't speak about, uh, Sarah, was, yeah. and this is a theme, you know, in, in Denmark, people like to talk about this very much. Um, is this a, like a, a eco biodynamic and what do you what 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 is the Mauro Molino's uh, uh, opinion about these um, different styles of natural biodynamic yeah, sure. ecological or conventional wines eh? yes I mean uh, um, Mauro Molino has always been involved in the protection of the environment so we can say that uh, we can be considered like a sustainable winery uh, since the beginning, so, so since the 80s, uh, he uh, started to, to use uh, sustainable methods in our vineyards. Mm -hmm. uh, is to say, for example, uh, grassing the rows, uh, natural fertilization uh, and uh, um, pheromones. Mm -hmm. uh, also the second generation, for sure. So Martin and Matteo, they were quite influenced by the philosophy of the father. So they uh, kept the same philosophy and they uh, learned how to love the, uh, the nature and to respect uh, its balance. Uh, but in the last years, uh, they uh, have also um, started to, to think about uh, how to adapt our sustainable approach to the global uh, warming, so to the climate change. And uh, they started to uh, use uh, new sustainable methods, for example, the cover crop method. Uh, that is a, a method coming from the organic viticulture. Um, and it is a method that uh, brings uh, multiple uh, benefits to the, to the vineyard. Uh, first of all, uh, it promotes the biodiversity, uh, it, increase the bi uh, it increase the fertility of the soil, uh, it, uh, um, cover crops are usually grasses and legumes that we planted in our vineyards. They are uh, nitrogen fixing agents, so they take the nitrogen from the atmosphere, they transfer it into the soil. In this way, we increase uh, the micro life under the soil in a natural way. And uh, most of all, we uh, manage the erosion of the soil and we modify uh, the drainage. So this is very important in this period where 
we have uh, very warm temperatures in summertime, sometimes uh, without any rainfalls. And then maybe after one month, a very strong hailstorm, uh, uh, sorry, a very strong uh, rainstorm. Uh, this is very important in order to try to uh, drainage the water that we receive in a good way, in order to store it mm -hmm. uh, and not just, uh, you know, uh, let, let it go very quickly. Yeah. So the cover crop is a method that we started to use uh, two years, last, years, last year in uh, two of our vineyards. And this year we have put it in uh, mostly all of our vineyards. So it's something that, uh, I mean, you cannot see the results now. It's something that you will see in the future. In this mm -hmm. way, we will keep the soil fresher. We will keep uh, the water in our vineyards. And uh, we think that uh, it, it will be better for our Nebbiolo grapes, uh, maybe in 10 years uh, when we will have maybe 40 degrees for three months during summertime and uh, as we know Nebbiolo uh, it's very sensitive so it can uh, really suffer from uh, from this so we mm -hmm. will try I mean we are thinking about how to manage the global changing in this way yeah yeah that's another topic that we will have to take in another tasting, is it uh, if we try Arnais and and uh, any other of your wines? Because now we've tasted, a, uh, we've done a masterclass on, on Nebbiolo, uh, but you do have uh, many other wines such as uh, uh, Barbera, Barbera de Asti, um, uh, well, the Chardonnays, et cetera, et cetera, that we do have in our portfolio and people are so welcome to, to buy, both from the, both from the, the, the DK website in our shop in Charlottenlund uh, and even we just, as I said, launched uh, our uh, Swedish um, webpage, which I'm very, very proud to 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 present for for my my Swedish private customers. Uh, with that being said, somebody was asking. I'm I'm I work in the Swedish department. Um, uh, my Danish colleagues are all on vacation today, so I had to take this call, which I'm very proud to do, Sara. Uh, it's been lovely to 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 be speaking to you. And there was another person asking, um, Sara, whilst you were describing. Uh, your ecological methods or your sustainable methods of, of, of doing things um, about uh, uh, what is the toast that you use uh, in, in the well, barriques. In this, yeah, in the barriques. I, was, yeah. I was just reading now. Yes, we are using uh, barriques that are light toasted or non toasted. Mm -hmm. So, the, the, the um, how can I say, the um, percentage of toasted barriques uh, is, uh, is, very, is very low. Yeah. Well, I'm going to repeat myself, but you said how much, um, uh, how much new wood do you use, for example, in the Galinotto? Uh, you mean uh, the, the new barriques that we're yes. using for Galinotto is always the 20, 30 yeah. percent. In case so... of Galinotto, it's a little bit less just because uh, it's different aging because we are using both big barrels and barriques. Mm -hmm. But if we are speaking about La Serra, for example, um, we have uh, Good, 20, 30% oh, no. of new barriques. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, why do you toast the woods? Uh, it's, uh, I mean, in order to create the, this, uh, this container for the aging, it's, uh, it's quite important to toast them in order to create the shape. Yeah. So in the last years, we can, uh, we can, uh, Choice. Uh, we can choose the the level of uh, toasting. That's the reason why we are usually choosing quite uh, low um, levels. But mm. uh, if you if you don't toast the oak, you cannot uh, modify the shape. You know the, mm. the oak is just right, mm. and yeah. you have to create the shape. No, absolutely certain about that. And then, well, obviously the, the the toast, depending on the toast, and and most of the people here asking if the, if the levels of toast is because they know what toast is, uh, but it gives uh, certain characters in the wine which are not primary or secondary, but tertiary aromas and taste. In this case, uh, it could bring a lot of leather. Obviously, the oak can be very present. It can enhance the the tannins of of, of the wines, um, but also uh, lesser. Lesser toast or even more washed uh, barriques uh, helps the wine to become more oxidative. And this is something that we did not really touch that much, Sara. But, but um, uh, ne the Nebbiolo grape in Barolo wines are, uh, sometimes does like a bit of a, an oxidation style. And, and uh, this is something that, for example, the body, the old school, uh, would uh, um, 
use these types of like huge barriques to let the wine breathe a bit more because the tannins are so structured and the wine is so so austere yeah um, so uh, but now obviously with the probably the the blending of the two different styles and the, the body with the barriques that are new um there's a bit of both i guess in some in some way uh, yeah, but yeah, you did answer that question. So, yeah, do you have Botti or do you use a stainless steel and barriques? Okay. We have uh, uh, all. I mean, we are using stainless steel for the fermentation and maceration. Then for some wines, we are using uh, uh, Botti and for some others, we are using barriques. Yeah, why hmm. is the French oak the best for this? The fr uh, okay. <laughs> I can actually answer this uh, question since I'm Spanish and... Uh, Uh, compare, for example, the, the classic uh, barriques used uh, are American oak and French oak. Those are the now then in Slovenian oak, and there's a lot of new different styles. But the classic ones have been those two. If you, for example, try a wine from Rioja or Ribera del Duero, uh, you will you will taste like the astringency comes from the grapes, but at the same time of the, the thorough um, uh, oak toast uh, which can give like a, a, a bit of a tone of vanilla uh, well a bit not quite much and uh, also very importantly a tropical note of, of co um, uh, coconut and now maybe this is becoming very 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 technical but to talk about the elegance uh, the wines with American oak would probably give them a bit of a, a big body and, uh, and uh, uh, the French toast is more um, volatile and, and uh, poro, poros, if I can say that without a Swedish accent. So it's, it, it, lets, um, it lets a bit of more air in, in, in it and it becomes a bit more elegant. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and that's the reason why we have decided to use only French oak in order not to impact too much on the wine and in order not to uh, get too many green tannins from the oak and to just get a very good elegance from it. Okay, we're comparing um, uh, comparing the wines with, with old age Bordeaux. So, yeah, I've, no? I've, I've, I've read just now. Interesting, wow, interesting. Bordeaux, one, uh, 1982. So this yeah. is a... Uh, a great compliment, I think, for Galinotto 15. <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. I, would, I would say that too. Um, uh, definitely, it's a good, good vintage. And um, uh, yeah, it, it, it does explain also the spectrum of how you can drink your wines from, from Mauro Molino uh, from an early age, right? Um, and, and have characters of, of, of aging that are accessible already. Yeah. 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 So how do you decide how much new oak to use? Uh, this is something that usually we do uh, in average each year. I mean, uh, we change the, the, the old barriques and we introduce the new ones. And that's always uh, between a 20 and 30 percent. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any challenges in retaining acidity with the global warming? Yeah, uh, I would say that for the moment, uh, it's not a very imp important problem in case of our uh, wines, because if we have to be sincere, um, the global warming for Nebbiolo until now was quite good, but just because... Uh, uh, as we were discussing before, in the past, it was very hard to have uh, very good vintages, while in the last uh, 10 years, uh, we got uh, almost uh, amazing vintages from 2010 until now. And it was uh, mostly for the global warming. So I would say that for the moment, we don't have any, any problem. Uh, we could have in the future, and that's the reason why we are trying to find some uh, methods that could... Uh, uh, keep the freshness in the soil in this way we can also keep the acidity in the in the future wine yeah yeah well that's great obviously considering that the, everybody's talking about uh, the um, the global warming uh, right now there's another uh, another thing that we talk about that's covid but but uh, but uh, obviously before that the the question uh, and the the reason of speaking was was uh, was the global warming and uh, you can see that more maybe in France and in Spain, but uh, but your uh, the positive thing is that it will come a bit later. Uh, I guess that you always have had a bit of problem ripening your fruits. So right now maybe you're reaching a point. Yeah, now where... it's perfect. I mean, yeah. uh, it's it's so, 
it's it's very good because uh, at the beginning of October we have the grapes that are perfectly ripe, and mm. uh, for Nebbiolo it's good. Uh, yeah. For Barbera as well because Barbera generally loves very hot vintages, so Barbera mm. is. Uh, Barbera has a very nice acidity, so if the vintage is hot, we can also get the fruit, we can also get uh, the, the, the more um, powerful part in terms of structure, so it's nice. So yeah. I would say that for the moment we don't have any, any problem about this. Uh, for sure, uh, we have to think about the future, and that's the reason why uh, we started to use some With this methods. method. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, well, we should round out so that yeah. our, our customers don't, uh, don't feel that, uh, that we're... Uh, Boring. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but it's been fantastically interesting. It just, uh, for me, it's gone like this fast. Sarah, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. And, um, yeah, for me, the I, same. I really want to say thank you very much to, to Mauro, Mateo, eh, eh, Martina and, and Mattia to, for, for um, yeah, having, having us represent them. Uh, you guys I mean and uh, and it's just been a pleasure and I think that we should definitely do this again very soon and, yeah um, definitely yeah. I, yeah. I I hope to to come to visit you personally soon but uh, we will see in the next months how is the situation and uh, I know that uh, many of your clients already booked some uh, tastings for the autumn time in our cellar so I hope uh, I mean, uh, that they could uh, make it and come to visit us. Anyways, you know that there is also the possibility to book the virtual tasting. Hopefully. And uh, if you want the wines, you can buy them at Kai's Wine. Yeah, exactly. You can buy them at, a, at a, our shop or internet. You can always call us, uh, any of the sales reps in, in Denmark. And uh, for you guys that are joining us from Sweden, there's been people joining from everywhere, from the US, from Indonesia, yeah, from I Spain, was, from, I was from everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, uh, I, I, well. I think that before someone uh, made a question about the system Bolaget, so the Swedish monopoly, we uh -huh. don't have any wines there, so it's impossible to buy wines from, uh, the, from the monopoly in Sweden, but they can buy them from your website, I suppose. Uh, no, 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 absolutely. You can buy them from now. We've, 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 got, a, we've got the website open. Uh, you can directly call me and I'll, I'll fix a, a box uh, that is uh, suited for your, your preferences of, of uh, Mauro Molino's wines. Uh, but you can always, 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 always uh, uh, order wines in, uh, uh, in sustainable logic with the selling sortiment. That is always possible. So, uh, uh, to, to like in the ordering range, is that one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's, yeah. I, okay. Perfect. So, so yeah. you can always like uh, uh, call them or even by the internet do that. But, but also our wines, if even if they no, are certo, not. Certo, certo. Of course, ah, of course. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Nice, so nice. every the, the 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 reason for the monopoly is to to um, uh, obviously uh, have a governmental way of selling things, but at the same time to offer the spectrum of things. So they have to offer everything that um, that wants to be offered or that has. Um, that has a, a potential consumption, uh, let us say. So they can do that, but we're, we're definitely up for business and we just open our webpage and we deliver, uh, we deliver it directly to, 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 yeah, to your homes. So, yeah. Okay, like that, just a, a smile. I will do a, a screenshot, okay? Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I think we are at the end of our masterclass. I thank you very much to you for the presence and everyone for attending it. And for uh, me also. see you yeah. soon. We will, we will be in touch. Certo. Grazie mille. Grazie mille. Thank you very much. And uh, it's been a pleasure. Okay? Ciao. Ciao, ciao. From Taste Fine. Okay.